Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the software technician for Scan and Plan Guide. Um, today, we're going to go over the protocols and all the information that we would need um, to start the case, um, how to send us a case, um, how to receive the cases. Um, we'll go over how to use the software and we're going to be going over a case where we will be using the software to place three implants. Um, so to start off with, uh, we are going to go over what we will need for a um, non-edentalist case. Uh, for a non-edentalist non case, uh, the guide is teeth supported. Um, the um, usually for non-endentalists, as long as they have a minimum of three teeth, um, would be considered a non-endentalist case. Uh, from that case, all we would need to do is to start is a stone model or the STL file um, and a CT scan uh, in multi dicam file. Uh, I'll go a little bit more in detail in a little bit with the multi dicam file, but let's just go over the stone model. Uh, stone model, um, you can send us the stone model, or if you have a place that can actually scan the stone model, uh, they can create an STL file. Um, that STL file can be emailed to us. Um, it's very important that the stone model has no extra material or holes around the teeth or gums um, because the guide will, will be generated or designed off the stone model. So it's very important that you take your time on taking the impression and also uh, pouring up the stone model. Um, also, if the patient has a partial denture, um, please make sure that you remove that partial denture so that once the stone model or STL file um, is received and we put it into the software, we can actually see the true tissue height of the patient. Um, now going into the CT scan, uh, multi dicam file. Uh, the multi dicam files are just multiple slices of the CT. Um, any CT machine is able to export multi dicam file um, to to get more detail exactly how to extract the multi dicam file, if um, you have um, you haven't exported multi dicam files before, you can contact the manufacturer of the CT scan machine, and they can inform you how to do it. Either um, logging into your computer and showing you exactly step by step, or just explaining it over the phone. Um, also, um, we're taking the CT scan. It's very important to have the patient's mouth open about 8 to 10 millimeters. Uh, this is so we can actually separate the upper jaw and the lower jaw in the software. Um, so like this, this would be making us a lot easier on us merging the STL file with the 3D image of the CT scan. and also make it easier for you when you're designing the implant or if um, our doctor is designing the implant for you. So when you receive it, you can actually see the implant coming out in the 3D a lot easier. Um, the CT scan too, if the patient is also um, have like a partial denture, it's very important to have that removed during the CT scan. Um, do that the partial denture can create scatter because usually with the partial denture there'll be uh, metallic holding the denture in place. Um, now for a person that has um, full and fully crowned teeth, um, there is a different step on taking this. Uh, we would not need a stone model. Um, just due to when a CT scan is taken of, of a person that has full crown, uh, it'll deform the 3D image of the patient's jaw where the teeth are. So 
with this information, um, we would not be able to merge the STL file with the CT. Um, so the step to solve that solution would be creating a radiographic guide stent. Um, it's pretty much similar to like a night card. Um, once you have created that, that would go over um, any gums that you are planning to uh, place an implant at or teeth. Um, you would place uh, six sparkers onto that stent. Um, from there, um, you have to make sure that that stent that you're making is about 2.5 to 3 millimeter thick. Um, once that is done, then the patient will get a CT scan with that stent that you made with the markers. And then the, um, you will also CT um, scan the stent by itself with the markers. Um, and then once we have that information, we'll merge it. Uh, for fully dentalist cases, it's a little bit similar to what I was talking about for a fully crown. Um, you would need to have the patient's uh, existing denture, or you can create a temporary denture. Um, if you are planning on using their existing denture, you just have to make sure that the denture is fitting properly into the patient's mouth. Um, if not, uh, you would have to hard reline the denture. Um, why we ask for a hard reline is because if you do a hard reline, it will be visible um, in the CT scan. Um, a person that has two teeth and they have a denture would be considered as a fully odontalist case. So from there, what you would want to do, um, same thing, is if there is no metal, then you can use that denture. Um, if it's fitting properly, um, you don't have to hard reline it. If it's a little loose, then you would have to hard reline. If this uh, denture has any metal, you would create a temporary denture without um, any metal in it. So once you have um, the denture or the temporary denture set in place, then you would place three markers on the buckle and three markers on the lingual side. Um, these markers doesn't have to be any uh, specific areas. Um, these markers, as long as they're not parallel from the buckle markers with the lingual markers. Um, so you can use uh, Gupta the Percha markers uh, to place your markers in uh, on the denture. You can either uh, drill like a millimeter hole into the denture or glue those markers onto the denture. Um, if you are planning on using these denture um, even after um, placing the implants, um, you can also buy stickers that has the markers. So you just peel off the stickers and place them onto the denture, just as you see it on the image. Um, you can get these markers um, online at uh, suremark.com. Um, I added the link to the bottom, and I also added the model of these stickers. So once this is done, um, you would just have the patient um, place their denture back into her mouth with the markers and take a CT scan with the patient, no, with the denture in the patient's mouth, um, making sure that the denture is fitting properly in the patient's mouth. Um, if you're not sure that it's all the way, you can use cotton roll to have the patient bite down to make sure that the denture is fitting properly on the palate of the patient's mouth. Um, 
and then you would take a CT scan of just the denture by itself. So to summarize all the data that you would need um, to start one of the guides uh, for a non-dentalist case, just a CT scan in multi dicam file and a stone model or STL file. Uh, fully crown, a CT scan of the patient with the stent with the markers and a stent a CT scan of the stent by itself with the markers. With a fully dentalist case, uh, you need a CT scan of the patient with the dentures with the markers and the stent uh, with the, the denture um, by itself with the dent um, with the markers, just by itself a CT scan. Um, all all of these will need um, a case order form to be sent with them. Um, this case order form is very simple. Uh, basic patient's name, uh, patient's file number. So we can um, keep track of which file it is um, for HIPAA approved uh, when we're invoicing you. Um, and also the surgery date, uh, the type of surgical kit that you shall be using for the surgery. Uh, if it's gonna be a cementable screw retained or removable, um, if it's gonna be a flap or flapless surgery, um, or if it's gonna be an extraction or um, not. Um, on the top right, you see a picture of uh, the tooth number. Um, you would just circle which tooth number that you're going to be wanting to place the implant. Uh, and then on the second page, you just sign print and date. Um, you can actually fax over this order form to us at 310 or you can email it at, uh, to info at siguide.com. Um, I also added the link in here, so you can just click on the link and you can always have the order form uh, to send with a case. Now, uploading the data, uh, you'll receive an email to a link to upload all the data there will be instructions of step by step of how to upload all the information to us. Now, setting up the data, um, all you would need to do is once you have the multi dicam file and the STL file in a folder, you will rename that um, with the patient's name. Once uh, you have the patient's name, you will highlight the folder just by clicking on it once and then right clicking on the folder. From there, you're, you will scroll down to where it says send to and then compress uh, zip folder. And then just zip the folder up. Um, once you have that information, you can go to the link you can drag over the folder into where it says drag file here, or you can go right below where it says browse file and just go to where you have the files um, saved. So if it's either in your documents or if it's in your desktop, you would just go to your desktop, find the folder and just double click on it. Once, um, and then from there, you just click Upload. Um, from when it's uploading, it'll give you, it'll start generating an estimate time of how long it's gonna take. Um, once it's done, it's automatically gonna send us a email notification that you upload a file to us. Um, once you open the link, you can also save the link in your um, browser. So from here, you don't have to always go into your email to upload the information. You can just uh, 
once you have the link open the first time, you can click the star on your browser and save it or um, bookmark it. So like that, you can just go to your bookmark and you can open the link anytime you want because this link does not expire. Um, downloading the file, you receive an email that will notify you to download the file. From there, you just follow the link and continue downloading it. Um, once it is downloaded, it will be in your download folder. <coughs> From there, you will see the zip folder, and then you will just click on it once to highlight it, and then you will just go down to Extract All and click on there. There, you will just... Uh, then click extract. Um, now the difference between a zip folder and a non-zip folder is just on the left-hand side, you can see the folder has like a little zipper. This is actually a way of making it easier to upload the file to send to us. Um, when the folder is in this form, uh, you're unable to open it uh, through the software. Um, once you extract it, it will be a non-zip folder. And you will have an image of a folder that is open. Once you have it as a non-zip folder, you'll be able to open it and open the file. So you can take a look at the case. Opening the case, all you would have to do is once you open the folder, that's a non-zip folder, you'll go to the file that has a software logo and just double click on that to open it. For approving and editing, for approving um, a case, um, all you would need to do is uh, email us back, reply that you approve the case. <coughs> for editing, uh, you can follow the link uh, to the software walkthrough that I will be going over in a little bit. Um, for um, support, um, you can download a team viewer that will let us uh, access your computer um, if you need any help and then we can walk you through the software or um, to go over the case. So now that we're done with the protocols and all the information that you would need to start the case, uh, let's go over what the software is. So this will ex uh, explain how to open the folder, just like how we went over before. Once you have it downloaded and you have it extracted, you would just go to the file that has the software logo and double click on it. Once you do that, um, it'll open the software. Um, some basic information um, for using the software. It makes it a lot easier if you're using a wireless mouse, if you're using a laptop. Uh, instead of using the mouse pad. Um, so when using the mouse, if you push down onto the wheel, like pushing the wheel into the mouse, you can pan the image. Um, 
main function, left clicking and holding on to the CT will change the contrast. Um, right clicking and holding um, on the CT will zoom in and out. Um, now, placing the implant by setting up the uh, screen, all you would do is double click on the CT um, to jump to where you want to place the implant. Um, on the very top, there's a button that says distance. Um, that will help you measure um, the area that you have. Uh, just by clicking on distance, you can click once to start the measurement and then just scroll down to where you want to go to. So like say if you click up here to start and then scroll down to the nerve and then click again and that will stop the measurement. <clears throat> now to remove the measurement, all you would want to do is click on the white line until it turns red and then click the delete button on your keyboard. Um, from there, it'll remove the measurements. Once you have the measurements, then you can go to your left side um, where it says tooth number and just scroll down and click the tooth number that you're going to be working on. Um, making sure that uh, when you're picking the tooth number, you're clicking the number in system on your left hand side. Once you have done that, you can go into your system library. And then once you're in your system library, you'll have a list of uh, your implants. Um, if you're working with AB, you'll go to Aureo Bio. It'll have your type of implant that you can choose from. Um, once you highlight the implant that you want, then on the bottom of that small screen, you click OK. Once you click OK, then just click on the CT. It's very important that you don't click on the vertical or horizontal line that's on the CT. Um, you can think of that as a 3D image box or the line of the 3D image box. If you click on the 3D image, uh, it's going to display that implant on the outside of the 3D box. So you could just click it next to the line um, because I will be explaining how you'll be able to move it. So once you click on it, you will just left click and hold on the implant itself and you can drag the implant where you want it to be. Um, to angle it, if you see there are uh, purple dots above the implant and below the implant. Um, if you, so on your top left screen, if you angle your implant, you'll be angling it buccolingually. If you angle the implant on your top right side of the screen, you're going to be angling it meso distal. If you angle your implant, on the top, uh, you'll be angling the um, body of the implant, the top body of the implant. Um, if you're ang angling it from the bottom, where uh, closer to the apex of the implant, you'll ang be angling more of the apex of the implant. Changing uh, implant size is very simple. There's two steps. You can either Double click on the implant and it will automatically take you back to the uh, library system to change the different sizes. Um, or you can just um, click on library and then the library will take you back so you can go and change the size of the implant. Um, checking angulation. Um, you'll be using this um, in the 3D image. The 3D image will give you the best way of uh, seeing how uh, how much of an angulation or how the how the restorative part is going to be or coming. Um, features that are in the software. Um, the main one is the safety zone. This would 
be the main importancy one that you'll be using the most. Uh, so with the safety zone, it's going to create a 1.5 uh, diameter box around the implant. Um, and it will actually create a two millimeter from the apex of the implant to the bottom of the uh, white line. So for the two millimeter, you have that control. So when you're placing an implant in the mandible, it'll let you know if you're too close to the nerve or not. Um, for the 1.5, um, you can make sure that you're 1.5 away from a uh, root or if you have enough 1.5 millimeter of bone within the implant of the safety zone. Um, <clears throat> if you have an existing implant that already uh, the patient has and you're placing another one next to it, you can actually change the safety zone diameter um, and change it to three diameter, three millimeter. And then from there, you can make sure that you're three millimeters away from that existing implant. Um, the only thing is once you change the diameter of the safety zone, it will not change the depth of the two millimeter that's from the apex of the implant to the bottom of the safety zone. <clears throat> there is a feature that's called implant central. Just in case, uh, say you have to angle the implant or the patient jaws a little bit angled, uh, you can place your implant. Um, as long as you keep the axis view straight, just like you see on the very bottom, and you click implant central, it will actually center the implant by angling the the CT around the implant um, like that, then you can see the whole implant. Um, you can also get a better view of how the other teeth are looking at. Um, and we'll actually make it a lot, lot easier on planning your cases. Um, you can also check the implant in a 360 view. Um, this will be located on your bottom middle screen of the software. Uh, there will be a little bit a uh, small logo with a CT image and uh, the image of an implant. From here, once you um, just scroll through um, the wheel of the mouse, just by rotating it, um, you can actually rotate the um, CT image around the implant seeing how in every angle how that implant is in the bone and making sure that um, within the implant around the implant everything is perfectly placed <clears throat> you can also check um, just like maybe if the CT has a little bit of scatter and everything you can actually check the um, distance of the implant to the nerve and to the root. Um, on the bottom right hand side screen, uh, there'll be a smaller icon that will be located there um, with a uh, one millimeter and then uh, two arrows, one pointing up and uh, one pointing down. Uh, if you keep going down, um, it'll actually make the three image of the jaw uh, translucent so you can actually see the roots a lot better and you can see the nerve where it's located um, in the software usually we will have the case sent back to you with the virtual teeth but um, within any case um, you can just go to additional reference uh, go to virtual uh, tooth and then click add and then go to universal numbering. Um, once you're in universal numbering, whichever tooth number we're working on, uh, you can click on that tooth number and it will place a virtual tooth. Um, just like the implant, um, it'll have um, two dots where you can angle the virtual tooth 
um, you can click and hold on the virtual tooth and drag it to move it into the right place if you need to. And also beside that, there is an x-ray mode that you can click on the top right side of your screen and it'll actually change it into an x-ray um, view. Um, in any of the windows that are in the software, and once the smaller icons pop up, if you click on the first small icon, it will actually enlarge it. That window, so it makes it a lot easier to, to view. There is a, also an icon, so you can check the bone quality too. Um, by clicking on there, it will actually color code the implant. Uh, so it is pretty much uh, blue is your type 1, green is your type 2, yellow is your type 3, and red is your type 4. On any of the image, uh, you will see like a little orange icon that you can click on, and it will actually take a screenshot of that window that you're on. From there, you can go to snapshot and bookmark, and it will have the image that you took a screenshot of. There, where it says comment, you can actually write down the tooth number and any additional information that you want to have during the surgery once you receive the treatment plan. <clears throat> On the top left screen, there is like a little uh, checker uh, or domino uh, little logo that will be there. Once you click on it, it will actually do um, two, um, two slices before and two slices after of where you have the implant. Um, also in the software, um, you can actually find out if the implant is too close to uh, other implant that you are placing. So like say if you're placing two implants right next to each other, uh, it'll actually notify you if they're too close to each other. Um, pretty much they'll use the feature of the safety zone to make sure that it's not touching the other safety zone of the other implant. And they'll also notify you if you're too close to the nerve. So other um, keys that are on the software that is um, is important is one, the save button. Um, two is the undo button. So say if for some reason you are moving the implant and by accident you move the wrong one, you can click the undo to um, go back one step or two steps or three steps. Um, the distance button, um, <clears throat> uh, you also have on um, all objects. So you can lock all objects. So when you're reviewing the cases and um, you're trying to move the 3D image, you won't move one of the implant by accident or the virtual tooth. Um, we have one if you just want to lock the implants and then just work with the virtual teeth a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the next one is bone. This will hide the 3D image of the bone that's within the software. Um, so if you want to just take a look at the nerve more with the implant, you can do that. Uh, the scan template is either the STL file of the stone model, or it is the CT scan of the denture or the stent. 
you can remove that from the 3D image uh, just by clicking on that or clicking on it again to bring it back. Um, you can also hide the teeth, the virtual teeth, just by clicking on teeth, and that will hide the virtual teeth in the 3D image. So if you want to see how the implant's coming out of the tissue, um, you can click on teeth and hide it from the 3D image. <clears throat> So that is pretty much the um, ending part of the step-by-step -step of the software. So now we are going to go into the software and place three implants. So right now, um, this is what you will be seeing once you receive your case and you download it and extract the folder um, and then open it. Once you open it, You'll, you'll see the virtual teeth. Um, you'll see the CT. Um, so like how it was in the last um, uh, PDF file or the PowerPoint that we're looking at, you will just double click on the area that you're going to be wanting to work on, and it will jump to that area. Now that we have the virtual teeth also it makes it a little bit easier on um, placing the implants so if we go to our left hand side and go to universal and fdi we go down to tooth number 20. go to tooth number 20 system library and go to 3.75 by 11 and a half. Once we click on that and highlight it, we'll click OK. Um, because we already have the virtual teeth there, it'll automatically place the implant um, near the virtual tooth. So you have your option of just going in and adding all the implants first. And then from there, you can go in and edit. Or you can work on the first implant um, one by one um, and do it whichever way that you feel more comfortable. <clears throat> so let's just go one by one with this, or we'll go just start off with this one first. Um, so left clicking on the implant, we can drag it down. Um, now that we have the implant also, um, before moving it for the first time, we can actually turn on the safety zone just by going on your left hand side and just clicking on the box where it says show safety zone. And it'll create a, um, in the CT, it'll create a box, but you can see in the 3D image, it's a senator that surrounds the implant. Um, so right now, the uh, measurement is a 1.5. And in the 3D image, uh, there is a little bit of scatter in this one. So what we could do is just go to where it says bone, click on that and just pretty much work off the stone model and virtual tooth. So we can kind of see where the implant is going to be coming through the tooth or where the screw will be going through. Um, once we have it centered, uh, we can go and then pick our other tooth. <clears throat> so with this one, we'll go to 19, go to system library, and we'll pick say a 4.5 by 10, click OK for that.
sorry, my computer's acting a little slow today. Um, and then we can go even tooth number 18. Pick that one. Go to a 5 by 10. And click OK for that. Okay, so each implant will um, be generated in a different color. Um, color does not represent the size of the implant or not. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier when you're looking at the blue one. You know you're uh, looking at number 20. And if you're looking at number 18, you know you'll be looking at the more yellow color implant. <clears throat> Now we go back to number 19, uh, just by clicking on the implant itself. Um, it will jump back to that implant so we can start working on that one. So just by moving that implant, it's left click and hold on the implant and then we can drag it down. And once you move that implant, it will also drag the safety zone um, in that area. So you can see the bottom of the safety zone is above the nerve. So now we know we're more than two millimeters above the nerve. So we are perfectly fine with that. And then we can go through the slices by just rotating the wheel, making sure we're in bone all the way around the implant. And making sure that we are centered in the um, virtual tooth to make sure that if you are wanting to do a screw retain, um, that we are in that area. Um, now let's jump to number 18. And then we can bring this one down. So we can see that the nerve is a little bit into the safety zone and we are a little bit close to the lingual plate. So we can either Double click on the implant or go into the system library and then just go down to a 5x8 and click OK. This will just update the implant, not changing the angulation of the implant of how we have it. Now that we are a little bit more centered, we can see that we can, uh, if we want, we can actually click on the implant and just drag it down a little bit if we want to. And then just go through the slices again on each of the implant, making sure that we are perfectly into the bone and we're not interfering with the nerve or the other implant 
on the top right hand side you can see the safety zone um, making sure that we are um, we have three millimeters of space so each safety zone is 1.5 so as long as the safety zone aren't touching we know we have the three millimeter space um, if you want to check and if you want to make sure that we're maybe two millimeters away from an existing route, um, like I said earlier, we can just click the safety zone to two millimeters, and that will change the safety zone in the images and update it to two millimeters. And then we can just scroll through those slices, making sure we're two millimeters away from the roots, and we're perfectly fine. And we can change that back to 1.5. <clears throat> so you can see how the implant is uh, located uh, through the virtual tooth. Um, If you wanted to hide the virtual tooth, you can click on tooth, and then you can see how um, the implant will be coming out um, straight uh, from the patient's gums. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, the scan template. We can click on that and hide the scan template, and we can click on bone and bring the CT scan of the patient's bone back. And we can change the translucency of the patient's bone and see how we are away from the root from number 21 to the implant of number 20. Yeah, make this current. There we go. We can see how the implant is away from the tooth or the root, making sure that we're perfectly safe. We can also see the nerve, how it's located and where it's at. And we can actually see the safety zone in the 3D image and make sure that we're far away from the nerve with the safety zone. <coughs> We can click on the scan template to bring it back. Um, let's click on one of the on one of the implants again. So we can bring the implants back into the bottom min middle center. So from here, I can show you the um, way to check the bone density. So once we are here, um, we can click the safety zone off. and click on neighborhood expression and then we can see that mostly it is a uh, type 2 with a little bit of type 3 bone so you can kind of have an idea of how 
the bone's going to be when you're uh, doing your drill sequence. And you can click on the next implant and then just go to neighborhood expression and do the same thing. So you can see this one is a little bit more softer. Now there's a little bit um, more type three, a little bit of type four, very thin down the middle. Um, <clears throat> um, and then we can also check out the 360 view. So we click on here. Um, and if we click on the first icon, we can enlarge that and then just with the wheel of the mouse, rotate it 360 and take a look at how the implant is located into the bone. In a 360 view. The other thing that we can do too is if we, min by clicking on the first icon again, it will minimize it. Um, <clears throat> and if you click that same icon on the bottom right side, You have the 360 view, but beside that, you can also see how the other three implant are in the 360 view, plus the nerve. Um, and earlier when I was going over the protocols of um, removing any partial denture so we can see the virtual height of the gums. Um, we can measure how high the gum is from the bone or from the implant. Um, so you can get any of your information on your restorative parts. Um, um, saving cases. Um, once you click save, um, a notification is going to pop up. Um, pretty much this is going over on the, your green on um, what you are designing and setting us. Um, being beside once you receive it, um, we will have some um, someone in our office that will go over the case. Uh, making sure there is no um, complication that will happen. Um, if anything is found out, we'll notify you. Or um, if it's a small, slight change, we'll do the change and send it back to you um, to get your approval. Um, and then once that is done, you just click OK to save all information. Once it's being saved, just wait until um, it's finished saving. Um, other feature I said before is um, you can take a screenshot um, and then if you go to your um, second tab on the top here, it will have your image and then you can write a comment. Um, also, say maybe in the beginning um, <clears throat> you plan to um, place three implants, um, but for some complication, um, you can only do two implants. You can just go into Object Manager. It's right next to your snapshots and bookmark. And then you can scroll down to the tooth or the implant that you place that you want to remove. So say we want to remove 18 and you would want to do a bridge. You can highlight number 19 and just click the red X. And that will remove that from the planning. Um, the other feature that I showed you earlier is we can click here on your top right hand screen and then just double check and see how everything looks 
or how it would look like within a in an X-ray style. Usually, that uh, generating that information is going to take a couple of seconds to generate in uh, X-ray um, format. And here you go. You can see how everything would look like uh, if you would take it within an x-ray. Um, you can also um, manually refine um, your planning. Um, here you can see where it says point 10. You can move whichever implant that you are working on. You can move it um, mesodistally. Uh, point 10 or move it up or down point 10 you can change that measurement uh, just by clicking on the arrow or just highlighting it and typing in the measurement that you want uh, if you want to change it um, in, in the buccolingual style you can just click here on your left hand side and um, change it or refine the movement for that one just by clicking on it so then if i click on it it'll move it down by 0.10 um, um any instruct um immediate placement is pretty much the same thing um uh, you just uh place the implant where the tooth is and then you can uh virtually place it where you want it to go um um, if um, there was an implant that we probably would have a little bit angled and if we need to use a angle abutment um, we can go to abutment right next right below the tooth number and we can actually change the Let's see here, the angle of the abutment. And then from here, I can check how much of an angle that you would need to or anything. Um, if it's going to be a custom abutment or if it's going to, if we can just use a, um, a angle abutment that uh, AB carries, uh, we'll be able to inform you. Um, and you'll be able to have that information uh, before we send the guide and everything to you. Um. <clears throat> so once is that is done, let me see if we, um, here I have how the treatment plan. Um, Um, and so that is the end. If you have any questions, um, you can contact me at 855-373-1614, extension 300. Um, we can also go over any cases or go over the software using TeamViewer that is was shown in the um, protocols. Um, and we will try to have these uh, files that we went over um, sent to you so you can go over it on your, um, on your free time. Uh, I thank you for um, your time. Um,